Yeah, come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Yes. Let's go. Boom. I'm here. You've got you. Got you. Ah! Ah! Fuck! No! No! What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here, and this past weekend a bunch of people linked me this clip from Larry Wheel's YouTube channel of a bodybuilder named Ryan Crowley tearing his pec in a pretty gruesome injury that he suffered while trying to incline bench press 220 kilograms or roughly 484 pounds. And first of all, I just want to say that I wish Ryan the absolute best. I hope that his surgery was a great success and that he's able to fully recover from this injury, learn from it, and continue on with a success successful career in bodybuilding. And all that being said, what can we learn from this? What can we take away from this? Could this gruesome injury have been prevented in the first place? And can we take away something helpful from this unfortunate event and use it as a teachable moment so that injuries like this can possibly be prevented in the future? And I know that it's easy for me to sit here right now and kind of Monday morning quarterback this one for you guys, but there are some pretty big red flags right there in Larry's video on his YouTube channel for everyone to see. They give a pretty strong indication of why this injury occurred and how it could have possibly been prevented. So today I'm going to break down some of the major indicators there that kind of jumped out at me when I was watching Larry's video. And if I'm missing something here or if you guys picked up on any other big red flags that I didn't mention, then please feel free to chime in in the comments here as well. So first of all, I don't know much about Ryan. I really don't pay attention to bodybuilding, so I don't know his history. And because of that, prior to seeing this video, I had never heard of him. I'm just being honest. And just all of that in the interest of full disclosure here. But I think that this allows me to analyze this incident from an unbiased point of view. So I watched the full video posted on Larry's channel, and I checked out Ryan's Instagram page. Just checked out the feed and see what was up there. And so He's 23 years old, and according to Larry, he's weighing in at about 330 pounds right now, and that is 330 pounds definitely at sub 10% body fat. So we'll just call it 10% right now for the sake of ease. It might even be lower than that, but that means that this guy at 23 years old is carrying around approximately 300 pounds of lean mass, and that is a shitload of lean mass, and this guy's still a kid. He's young as hell right now, and to accrue that much lean mass at such a young age does indicate that he has likely been using a hefty dose of anabolics for probably probably several years now, and his body's probably blown up in size relatively quickly. You can correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's just an educated guess, that he's blown up relatively quickly just over the course of a few years. And the thing about that is that when you're using a large amount of anabolic drugs, muscle size and muscle strength are able to increase very, very rapidly. But tendon strength and tendon integrity are not able to increase so rapidly. They cannot keep up with the muscle. So when you're using a large amount of performance enhancing drugs, at some point, the strength of your muscles will far, far outpace the strength of your tendons. The tendons simply cannot keep up, and thus outright ruptures such as this one become far, far, far more likely to occur. So that right there is red flag number one. Then we start to watch the training session, and we see the very first thing that Ryan does in the video during the workout is he starts to warm up with the empty bar, which is fine, but in doing so, we can see here that his shoulders and his chest completely lack normal levels of mobility. He can't even come probably within four to five inches of touching his chest with the empty bar. And that is a pretty drastic and abnormal level of tightness in those structures. There is some sort of massive underlying instability there that's causing that area to seize up like crazy. So the last thing that this guy should be doing is loading up that area with ultra heavy weights right now. And and this becomes more and more obvious as he increases the load on the bar. Even at just two plates, which is 
well short of his own body weight, his arms and his shoulders begin to shake a fair bit as he receives the weight out of the rack. By three plates, he's quivering, and by four plates, he's practically having a damn seizure. And these are all warnings from the nervous system that the body is not ready to be handling this weight at this moment in time. So that is red flag number two. Next, we see that in the middle of the training session, after they've already done a few sets, Larry actually advises Ryan to widen his grip on the bar. And there's nothing wrong with using a wider grip here. He's a very big guy, and he was using a pretty narrow grip for his frame. However, the problem here is that he is already incredibly, incredibly tight in those areas. And by widening the grip, you introduce greater amounts of abduction at the humerus, which is going to stress that already super, super tight pec tendon even further as he lowers the bar down. So now he's overstretching a tendon that is already practically begging not to be stretched at all. And he's doing it under massive amounts of load. So that is red flag number three. And if we continue watching the video, we hear Ryan say that he has not been training with free weights in recent history because of a shoulder injury that he's been battling. He says, and this is a quote, I haven't inclined benched in over a year. He also mentions that he hasn't been doing any sort of dumbbell bench pressing or anything like that either, and has really just been focusing on machine variations, specifically the pec deck machine where he can focus on contracting the chest muscles really hard, and that's how he's been making maintaining the size in his upper body. But so his body, his upper body is completely, completely unaccustomed to this type of training stress in general, which is red flag number four. Next, we see that by the time Ryan gets up to his set with four plates or 180 kilograms, approximately 396 pounds, he adds in a pair of Larry's elbow wraps to the mix, which we can ascertain from the rest of the context of this video is something that he's never done before. It's a piece of equipment that he's never used before. So now we've introduced a piece of unfamiliar equipment into the mix. And that piece of unfamiliar equipment happens to be one that allows you to lift more weight. And he's doing that on an unfamiliar movement pattern as well that his body is not adequately prepared to execute on. The tissues have not been conditioned to handle this stress, even with sub-maximal weights. And now he's using a piece of equipment that allows him to handle supra-maximal weights. So that is red flag number five. The next element that needs to be discussed is fatigue. Prior to injuring himself, attempting to lift 220 kilograms, Ryan performed a very difficult set with 180 kilograms. He knocked out seven reps unassisted, and then he attempted to grind out an eighth rep for approximately seven freaking seconds before Larry took the weight from him. So now his body is going to be highly, highly fatigued at this point after that immense grind. And the very next thing that he does is attempt to lift 220 kilograms, which is where the injury was sustained. And that is red flag number six. Finally, it's pretty obvious that Ryan does not typically max out on this exercise or many exercises at all. He's a bodybuilder and it is not his training style to max out. Never mind the fact that he hasn't been lifting with free weights on pressing movements for at least a year. He said that himself. So we can say conclusively that he has not attempted a max bench press of any sort for at least that time period, at least least one year, probably longer than that. But judging by the way that bodybuilders typically train, it's also a safe bet to say that it has been longer than that. And it is certainly not something that he does with any sort of regularity or with proper a proper period of preparation, because that's simply not a part of bodybuilding training. So this is a type of stress that his body is not accustomed to in general. And that's red flag number seven. Add in the accumulated fatigue from the training session trying to max out while in a fatigue state on a movement that you have not performed in over a year with a pre-existing injury that's likely to lead to compensations during that movement pattern using a wider grip than what you are comfortable using and what you've typically used and further stressing and overstretching an already ultra tight guarded 
unprepared and unconditioned tendon while using equipment that is going to allow you to lift supra maximal loads and then add all that to the fact that steroid users are more susceptible to these types of ruptures in the first place and you simply have a perfect storm for something catastrophic and gruesome like this to occur it's unfortunate and it sucks and i truly truly hope that ryan can come back from it and still do what he loves but to be perfectly honest and perfectly blunt, after reviewing the footage, it is really not surprising at all that something like this happened here. Ryan is just very, very lucky that it was freaking Larry Wheels behind him there to grab the weight before it could come crashing down onto his chest and make things 10 times worse than it already was. So what can we learn from this? First and foremost, primarily, I think we need to just take a step back and remember that how you train is really fucking important. There are a myriad of factors here that likely led to this gruesome injury, and they all added up on this particular day to create a perfect storm which caused the tendon to fail absolutely. So we should use this as a reminder and as a cautionary tale. Do not attempt to max out on movements that you have not adequately prepared your body to handle. There's simply no point in doing that. It's easy enough to spend a mesocycle working an exercise sub-maximally, honing your technique, building inter and intramuscular coordination, and gradually increasing the load on the bar and tapering the reps as the tissues acclimate to the stress. And in that same vein, do not attempt to go heavy on exercises that you can't even perform correctly in the first place. If your joints and your tendons are so inflexible that you lack the ability to move your body through essential and basic human movement patterns, then perhaps loading those same movement patterns with supra maximal weights is really not a good fucking idea. And lastly, don't just train haphazardly either. You don't just max out on a particular day because you fucking feel like it or because your ego is calling for you to do it there. Most people don't even need to max out at all, especially bodybuilders. But if you do decide that you want to max out for whatever reason, then it should come at the culmination of a proper training mesocycle, one that has prepared your body for that, both mentally and physically. The weight is titrated up slowly over the course of several weeks as the reps and volume taper down. Fitness is slowly revealed as fatigue dissipates. And then you test your max by working with weights that you absolutely know you can handle, using low reps to keep fatigue accumulation to a minimum, and making appropriate appropriate jumps in weight until you hit a tough but manageable personal best. And a 40 kilogram jump in weight at that stage, like what Ryan did, is not an appropriate jump in weight. And doing that after grinding out eight very difficult reps is even more ill-advised, never mind the rest of the factors already discussed in this video. So basically, don't do most of the shit that you saw in this video. Don't be dumb and don't let your ego take over how you choose to train. Follow a tried and true program from a reputable source. If you have a coach, then listen to your damn coach. If you don't have one, then make sure that you understand the basic principles of programming and lifting technique, how to manage cumulative fatigue properly, how to ramp up training loads properly, etc, etc, all that shit, and follow those principles when you put together your own training programs. And if you can't perform an exercise correctly in the first place, then the last damn thing that you should be doing is haphazardly maxing out on it. We can't avoid all injuries in the gym. I'm not saying that, but we can certainly take steps to drastically reduce the chances of something catastrophic like this happening to us. Just remember to be smart and always be safe, guys. And best of luck to Ryan during his recovery. And if you found this video helpful or informative, then please be sure to hit the like button and share it around so that more people are able to take something beneficial away. Hopefully, take something beneficial away from this very, very unfortunate incident. And that's all I got for today, guys. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.